Well, it's a fitting title. Uh, today it's getting down to the low 30s, but I know uh, a lot of you are getting ready to plant your uh, gardens for spring. And, uh, and we're going to go over today some of the cold, hardy tropicals for your garden. And uh, I'm going to give you a rundown on each of them. And there's quite a few, and I'm going to go over all the ones that we have in our garden. And uh, all these are ones that a uh, few of them will stay evergreen for you and the rest will come back for you year after year. And this is for zones five through eight. So this is for your subtropical garden. So this is your cold hardy tropicals. So let's get to it. So we're going to take a look at these tropical plants that you can put in zones 5 through 8 today. And um, just uh, keep in mind that when we're uh, talking about these, the best way to uh, keep these over, especially if you're talking about these lower zones, which a few of these plants can go in, like the uh, elephant ears and the bananas and uh, the cannas especially, uh, you are going to want to make sure that they're growing well, that you plant them out early in the season and uh, uh, get them going to a good size for so they'll uh, overwinter for you till the next year. But um, uh, we're going to take a look here and see. And first is our favorite, or one of our favorites, is the elephant ear, Colocasia. And uh, this first one here is one of my favorites. This is a Aloha. Um, these have done really well for us and um, you can find these in, in a lot of different uh, uh, places and uh, online. And um, uh, the elephant ears in general, they're gonna do well in the uh, best in kind of a wet location in your garden. Uh, they do best in uh, kind of a raised bed type situation and they also if you're uh, most people are going to do best if you have them in uh, uh, morning sun and afternoon shade where they don't get that really hot sun in the afternoon. They tend to not like that. Uh, the best way that you can keep them in the uh, afternoon sun is to keep them really really watered in a really wet location but uh, the second here we'll talk about is our uh, uh, one of the hardiest colocasia is the pink china and these elephant ears are uh, probably good into zone five uh, they're the best shot for you to try and uh, they're pretty aggressive they're pretty hard to get rid of once they get established and um, and uh, they're thought to be one of the hardiest ones, even though the Aloha for us has come back every year uh, with no problems. In fact, all these elephant ears have come back through negative six Fahrenheit, uh, uh, negative one last year, and a few years ago we had a, almost a zero in 2018, so these have all come back fine. But the next one we'll talk a little bit about here is these dwarf elephant ears. They're a little hard to find. Uh, they're called a Colocasia phallax. And these are very small uh, elephant ears that stay usually about 12 inches or less tall and uh, pretty small. And I just use them for a ground cover. And so you'll see here in this next photo that uh, we use them like to line different areas around some of our sidewalks and uh, uh, use them in a few different spots. In fact, we, we have a few of these in full sun that do okay. And uh, these also come back every year, no problem. So uh, last thing we'll talk about here with the elephant ears is they're very good if you want to put them in pots too. And you'll see this one here has gotten really large and looks real happy in this pot. And the secret to putting them in a pot or that I like to do is to keep them uh, really wet and full of water. And so what you do is you like, take some duct, duct tape and tape up the uh, holes at the bottom of your pot and go 
uh, so it'll stay full of water at the bottom. Go up about a third of the way uh, from the bottom. Drill your hole in the side of the pot. And uh, that way the bottom of the pot will stay full of water for your elephant ear. And it'll really like that. But um, that's a look at uh, some of our elephant ears. And uh, one of the most popular tropical uh, plants you can plant uh, in subtropical. And here we'll go on to the next one. And for our next plant that we're looking at is our uh, canna lilies. And uh, these uh, are a very tropical looking plant uh, for you. And they have a, a bloom most all summer. And uh, they can take a little bit of dry conditions. And uh, they like full sun, like being planted in kind of a raised uh, bed type situation. And the first one we're looking at here is Canna Indica Red. And these are giant cannas and can get 8 to 10 feet tall. And uh, uh, they're uh, popular. You can use these for like a background uh, to your tropical planting. Uh, put it in the back because they're so tall. And uh, we'll also take a look here. Some of our next ones, we have our uh, uh, pink starburst. We have quite a few different types of canna. We're just going to show you a few here and uh, uh, take a look at it. And all these canna have always come back well for us. And uh, most people have reported to me that uh, you can grow them all the way down into zone 5. If you put them in zone 5, you better put them in a very good microclimate, like on the south side of your house. Uh, in zone 6, uh, you probably need to mulch these pretty good. But here in zone 7, uh, I've gotten to where I don't even worry about uh, protecting them anymore. Uh, I've never had a problem with them coming back. Uh, so uh, they're just kind of one of those things. But uh, it's like the other plants. You want to make sure they're getting good and healthy and have good, uh, strong, big bulbs on them before winter, and they'll, they'll come back for you. Uh, next, we have our, one of the most popular and tropical-looking uh, versions of the canna is the Tropicana. And it has these bright, bright orange blooms, and uh, these get uh, four or five feet tall. And that's probably one of the most tropical looking uh, ones we have. And they kind of come in different sizes. The next one we'll look at here is a dwarf canna. It's a uh, Maui punch. And uh, this one only gets about 12 to 18 inches tall. It's, it's the smaller size. Uh, the dwarf cannas, the regular cannas get uh, in the five to six foot range and of course you have like the giant cannas there's a few of those and those can get uh, uh, at least six feet tall and can go up to 10 or even we've had a few go 12 feet tall and so uh, that's a pretty good look at your cannas and next on our list we've got the pineapple lily which is uh, a plant that's, uh, we grow it in the shade. I think some people up north can grow it uh, in part full sun. Um, these uh, can get, uh, they get, they can get pretty large, uh, two or three foot wide. And uh, they come up every year for us real well. So I'd say it's zone six or higher. And uh, they, uh, uh Pretty soon in summer, early summer, start putting up these uh, uh, unique looking blooms that you'll see here. And uh, just kind of an unusual different plant to have. That's kind of a tropical looking plant. And so uh, uh, that's there again, another, another one on the list. And next we'll move on to one of the uh, hardiest of the tropical plants. So this is a hardy hibiscus. Now these are uh, not like the tropical hibiscus which are not uh, nearly as hardy. The hardy hibiscus have a dull looking leaf and the tropical hibiscus have a real shiny looking leaf is how you can tell them apart. The other way you can tell them apart is the tropical hibiscus 
which won't come back year to year uh, have like some of the orange and yellow colors the hardy hibiscus unfortunately just usually has the pink red and i believe they have a bluish type color out now but uh, uh, these are zone four and up uh, so uh, they're very very hardy and they produce some very big uh, blooms they bloom uh, most of the summer and uh, and fall they'll come back and bloom uh, you'll think they're done and then they'll come back another time and uh, they come out a little late in the spring but uh, another good uh, addition to have to your tropical garden and something that's uh, gonna be very hardy for you And next we have something that I've just planted uh, last year, I believe is when we planted last spring, uh, Cuba Japonica, which is uh, a little kind of a uh, green and speckled bush. I think they have a few different varieties of these, but this was much hardier than we anticipated because it took our negative six Fahrenheit and was all frozen over and looked bad. but. Uh, come back completely unfazed and these are plants I believe you need to put in uh, uh, shade or very little sun uh, I think a few people have planted them in sun so I'm a little confused about that but uh, um, they make a good uh, addition to your tropical garden there so uh, uh, keep that in mind very cold hardy and uh, give you some greenery year round. This one doesn't die back. Uh, this one will stay green like this uh, year round for you. So a good, good addition. And next, how could we ever forget our, one of our favorite, probably the number one tropical pick uh, for your garden uh, to make it look tropical in a colder zone. And this is definitely one that most people don't uh, realize can survive. Uh, down to zone five is a hardy banana, the Musa Baju. And this particular uh, plant, it will kind of upsize each year. You'll start out uh, when you first plant them, it'll be five or six feet tall at the end of the year. The next year, you know, it may go eight or ten, and then it'll just keep going up to fifteen feet tall, maybe twenty. You know, very large plant. And the secret to getting these to overwinter, at least your first year, is to make sure they get very big and they have a uh, uh, once they get a large clump at the bottom, and you get several pups, and you get the main one that's uh, six foot or tall or larger than the probably make it over winter the first winter you might mulch it in good but if you're in zone six or seven you probably don't need any mulch uh, or anything to get this over winter these things are very tough uh, you can always put a little pile of mulch on it a little tarp or something if you want to in zone five or six in zone seven and higher there's no use in worrying about that and a little tip is there's also some other varieties that you can grow, uh, especially in the zone seven or higher. Uh, there's ice cream banana, and uh, uh, you know that uh, can survive uh, quite a few years for you. And some of the other bananas might surprise you, so don't be afraid to try them. But the Musa Baju is the cold hardy champion, and you will definitely have it come back if you get it good and strong before winter. And so uh, definitely that's one to put out. And the next thing we'll put out here is the giant calla lily. And these giant calla lilies uh, can get four feet or, or tall or more. They're pretty deceptive. Here in this photo, this is a pretty large plant, and uh, these usually need to be established before they bloom, so it might take a year or two for this thing to bloom, but they're gonna put up some tall, pretty white blooms, at least on this giant uh, calla lily here. 
and these are exceptionally cold hardy. Uh, they come back fine for us with no protection and uh, uh, they've already come back uh, almost fully this year already. And uh, so I would say this is a zone six and up plant. It's a little bit better than the regular calla lilies for being a, a tough plant. So uh, make sure you add that to your list. And next we'll add the regular calla lilies. These are uh, come in all types of uh, colors and uh, uh, we've got quite a few of these around the garden and uh, different types and uh, they will uh, much smaller than the giant one there uh, but uh, these are probably more of a zone seven and up plant but uh, they'll come back for you every year and uh, here's some pictures We've got some uh, at least the ones we have we have some yellows we have some reds here but um, also a very good plant for you to uh, uh, put out in your tropical garden and next we'll mention it just briefly here because I just have a couple of these but uh, and they, they're a little weak on, they don't really spread, or at least the ones we have or come back really good, but your hardy orchids. And, um, and so these might be worth a mention, and you can put this in a shady type area in your garden. And uh, here we have a look at, at one of those. And next on our list of uh, plants that we have, we have Fatsia japonica. And uh, this is another one we added uh, last year. And we have three different ones of those. We have, uh, I think the only one I have pictured here is the spider web. And we also have a variegated version. And we also just have the plain green version. And so those are not quite as hardy. Uh, they're zone eight and up. Uh, I believe they would not uh, uh, super familiar with those. I believe around 10 degrees or so uh, or less they'll defoliate. Uh, I believe they'll come back from the ground if they do defoliate. If you're in zones lower than eight, you can try them, I guess. But uh, there's another good tropical looking plant that you can add. And last but not least, for at least giving you a lot of uh, uh, tropical look, is uh, bamboo. And here uh, I keep all my bamboo in pots. You can look at one of our other videos and you can see that uh, uh, potted bamboo is the way I like to go. I'm, a little too afraid to put it in the ground here. We have too much going on, too many pipes in the ground, uh, too close to different things and that sort of thing. But uh, the only type of bamboo that you can use in colder zones uh, reliably is a running bamboo. And so I would suggest either putting it in pots or uh, really studying up on how to keep it in the ground because uh, it can really get out of control, but uh, the two types we keep here are Spectabilis, which is a very cold hardy bamboo. And this reason I uh, get the most cold hardy is because we're putting them in pots. We want them to be at least one zone colder than, than us. So these are uh, bamboo that are rated to about negative 10 Fahrenheit. And uh, uh, these took moderate damage in our negative six Fahrenheit, uh, but uh, uh, we have Spectabilis and Bassetti. And the one I have is supposedly a little bit rare type of Bassetti, a Bassetti dwarf. But um, those are the bamboo. You can use them to screen out uh, different things, use them as a background for other plants. And uh, they make a very good tropical looking plant for you. I have another video if you look on my channel uh, that tells how to put them in pots. It's one of the most popular videos we have. 
and uh, uh, if you do a little searching you'll find it and uh, so we hope you've enjoyed this uh, video and learned about uh, some of the hardy tropical plants and uh, uh, we hope everybody has a good day and please subscribe and like these videos because they uh, take a little time to do and we're trying to uh, 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 help everybody out and get this information out of what tropical plants you can grow especially in colder zones so uh, this is Tennessee Tropics and uh, we'll see you later